So I used to work at this restaurant called ABC Cuisine, mm. which is um, also one of the restaurants owned by a mich- three Michelin star chef. Mm. And um, I just applied for a job there because I loved the food there. Mm. And um, so those places or those menus are my go-to uh, places for some more inspiration or you know, like recipes that I would want to look up or menus that I want would want to refer to yeah. to be able to recreate them somehow. over here with my own touch hey everyone this is shruti welcome to my podcast i'm just curious where i talk of all things i'm curious about with the people i'm curious about and how they turned their passion into their profession in today's episode i'm going to be talking to the founder of the sea salt cafe in amdabad uh, she was studying creative direction and fashion in london when she discovered she had an inclination towards culinary studies that's when she decided to go to institute of culinary education in new york and she ended up getting three diplomas uh, in culinary arts culinary management and uh, pastry and baking from the institute of culinary education so i'm very happy to have anokhi shah with me today hi hi anokhi how are you doing all well how are you i'm good i'm good, good. Uh, okay. thank you so much so it's for... great to be here this, <laughs> thank is, you. this is actually a lot of fun <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. uh, i'm glad that you are like a very a sport about it yeah. like it's it's like i remember the first time when i even called you yeah. you would just like Yeah, tell me when, whenever, whenever you want, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> and it's fun to do something out of your ordinary routine. You know, yeah, it keeps yeah, yeah. your work also exciting. So yeah. this is good. This is good. Yeah. Great. I mean, I was surprised. You know, like because yeah. I speak to so many people that you know, would you like to come? Would you like yeah. to come? And not everybody is like, yeah, whenever you say. Like yeah. I don't have like any like I'm not traveling or anything yeah. right now. So it's fine yeah. whenever yeah. you say. So okay. really, thank you for that. Of course, of course. And uh, I'm so glad that we are here today, and yeah. we can we're going to talk about your journey. So So, as I said, you know, you were studying creative direction and mm. fashion in London. Mm. Talk to me about that. Why did? Why were you inclined towards that? And then we'll um, go. So I think I, as a kid, you know, at eighteen, you don't know what you like. I always thought I was into fashion um, or arts for some form of arts. I was developing my portfolio for fine arts, studying textiles together, just trying to apply to a college and get in. You know. Yeah, yeah. And um, then. from my interviews they thought i was more interested in textiles and fashion and styling so i sort of just happened to get into that line yeah um once i did the foundation for a year i hated the fashion aspect of it and since i'd already applied and i was in a college you know at yeah. lcf in london i was like might as well i have to sort of finish it yeah um so i opted for this course called creative direction for fashion uh which also had aspects of branding and marketing and like a product launch or you know just stuff around it yeah um so i didn't essentially like the fashion part of it but i think i un- really enjoyed the marketing the branding part yeah of it. yeah so uh went ahead with that thankfully somehow finished the program yeah. um and i think those aspects i'm thankful for that course because you can still apply those concepts to anything you do yeah. so that is helping me in whatever i'm doing right now also how like uh, as you said that you know while you were studying yeah. that uh, you you started sort of having a little inclination towards culinary you know yeah. uh, it, industry and everything yeah. so talk to me about the first experience when you were in london or what was that first time when you felt a spark about that curiosity about uh, you know that oh maybe i yeah. i want to do culinary so i think when i went to london i went with a very open mind as to like you know i'm going there i want to explore as much as possible not in terms of just people like the education part of it but also food and whatever the city has to offer yeah. so overall i was very open to even trying different cuisines and stuff but it happened the culinary aspect of it happened um uh, on a very random night it was very <laughs> random but a friend of mine suggested watching this movie called Julie and Julia yeah uh, <laughs> so uh, and she warned me she was like sit with a lot of food because you will get hungry while you're watching it so i'm watching this movie and i'm like like it's like an epiphany where i'm like this is what i want to do yeah. and um that night itself i started looking up these courses like just weekend courses in london that i could right. do alongside um my degree yeah and i called up my mom the next day being like listen i've looked this up i found this course in french cuisine techniques and i think i want to do it hmm. um and she was obviously she was like yeah you're there might as well explore yeah. or do it um so i did that um and i thoroughly enjoyed it so just after that one of the nights that i was going back home with all the food that i'd cooked from the mm. class a friend of mine told me about this cooking holiday in italy wow so um it was this 
It was like a proper cooking holiday in this 17th century Italian villa where you stay for a week and um, you pick your own herbs, your lemons, you do wine tasting, olive oil tasting, you make your own breads and pasta and it's just this entire culinary experience, wow. right? Wow. Um, so I decided to go for that. Um, mm. I did that and then I came back home to Ahmedabad, finished my degree and I was ready to start working, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. But thankfully, my parents were like, listen, you enjoy this so much. Why don't you look up other courses yeah. and just do it properly? Uh, and if you don't enjoy it, come back. It's fine. You don't have to finish it, but do it as a hobby, if you yeah. will, you know. Um, and that's how um, I applied to ICE and yeah. the journey sort of began. There's so much that I want to talk about what you just said. Yeah. The first thing, hmm. you're like... Not everybody get, has parents who will understand that, oh, you studied this, but now you have a different yeah. passion, so go do that. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. You know, so that's a big blessing. That like, is, you know, yeah, it's, sure. It's, I, it's a, not everybody has yeah. that. And they have been very supportive with everything. Like even with Seesaw, my dad has picked up used plates or, you know, like mom has helped with the interiors, like smallest of things, they've been so supportive. And only so, parents can do that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So. And um, you talked about like the experience in Italy. Yeah. Like, you know, where it was a cooking holiday and mm. um, how, how, like, how was that experience like, like, you know, when you went there, were you expecting anything? And uh, was it like you reliving what you saw in Julie and Julia? Because Meryl Streep is amazing. <laughs> yeah, she know? is. Um, I, do, I actually went with a very open mind. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, because I was 21 22 at that point yeah. um, and it was my first solo trip I guess okay. um, so I just went there um, and a lot of people had signed up for this program right so there were families there were couples there were people traveling from elsewhere but no one remotely of my age so yeah. uh, it was more like a retirement holiday for <laughs> everyone else. Um, but um, I think I met a lot of new people, um, tried a lot of new things, you know. Um, and even just being in that space or to connect with people who were so passionate about mm. food. And most of them for, were from London, actually. So to hear of all these small nook and corners or places that they went to or the places they liked. And then you would want to go back and explore more, yeah. right? Yeah. So just, um, and I still look up, like I still go to those recipes for inspiration or that place itself. And that yeah. sort of has like a memory. It's a very formative time as well, sure. you know. So it will leave a bigger imprint on you in terms of everything. Yeah. Like not just like obviously the bigger purpose is culinary exploration and everything. Sure. But I think it it at the 21, you were so lucky to have that, that experience. Exactly. That, that is so formative and yeah. that so many people don't get to explore the world at 21. Yeah. Which is, which is when they should actually. Yeah. You know, so. to, to, because it's the foundation, it's the yeah. formative. Um, so... Talk to me about like when you went to ICE. Yeah. Uh, how was that experience like uh, when you went there for the first hmm. time? You went for the culinary arts. Yeah. Yeah. So tell, talk to me about that. Um. So culinary arts, I just went. Like I said, it. I, in my mind, it was just a hobby. Yeah. So even when I went there, you know, in the first day, people are introducing themselves and they're like, "This is what I want to do. I want to open my own restaurant." And I'm like. I'm here because I like food and it's, I want to study it. I don't have a passion, like I don't have a goal. Um, but if I don't like it, I'll go back. You know, yeah. that was literally my idea of going there. But I thoroughly loved it. Like we, from the knife skills to understanding world cuisines and flavors and the college or even New York itself has so much to offer yeah. that not just from like school but like the smallest of experience you have right if you go out for a coffee you're having a new espresso every time so you're learning like flavor profiles in that like the wines you're drinking we had a beer class we had a whiskey tasting class mm. so we would learn stuff about every little thing that was there yeah and one of my chefs was like, there was this time when there was there was like a pork, fried pork in front of me. And I'm like, I'm not having this. Like, it was just pork fat. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not having this. And my chef was like, Anokhi, I don't care what it is. You're a chef. You're in this industry. If it's in front of you, you have to put it in your mouth. Like, mm. if you don't like it, it's fine. But develop that palate for yourself. So, you just the smallest of experience taught me so much. Um, and that's what made me want to go back and 
do, do it again do it, and do again. it again yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so but that's one thing i want to ask you hmm. you mentioned pork hmm. um you i aren't you vegetarian N- now i am um i have stopped eating meat for the last 2 years almost okay um okay. but i think even then i think if i travel i would want to at least explore because i'm in the industry i would want to try new meats or flavors yeah, yeah, yeah. but i don't think i need to eat it here in ahmedabad so i avoid yeah, it yeah. yeah no because like when you when you hear someone's name and it's yeah. anokhi shah like yeah. normally you have like you know that yeah. and when i saw your that instagram page also yeah. i was surprised i was like okay like so you know like this is interesting yeah. that you know she's being so open about yeah. this and you know she's treating her it as like it's a part of a job yeah, yeah. like that um talk to me about uh, when did you think that okay you were not prepared to start a cafe yeah. you did not have a goal yeah but how did you come up with that that okay now i maybe i want yeah. to do this um so the culinary management program so i did the culinary arts program i came back i started working here for a bit we used to do these pop ups so we would do like sit down dinners hmm. and have a different menu every time a veg menu and a non veg menu people could make reservations and come yeah. and um um so i did that for a year uh, then i wanted to study more on the business side of it of yeah. the culinary aspect so um i went back to study culinary management um along with which i did the pastry program too but as a part of the culinary management program we had to come up with a realistic business plan towards the end of those 9 months mm. where you had to sort of research put your mind behind the location the rent like actual numbers and come up with a proper proper business plan yeah. so sea salt happened to be that project actually Uh, that the location, you had worked on yeah. while you were in the management. Yeah. So course. the location was always one photo. I knew that the building was under construction. I spoke to them, figured out the rents, and it was a different unit, but uh, still the same location as such. Yeah. And the kitchen layout. I mean, my mom is an interior designer, so she helped me plan the kitchen space. Like we actually came up with drawings for everything, yeah. because as a part of the culinary pro- management program, we also had to study kitchen design. You know, the functioning. for efficiency purposes yeah. or um like menu designing smallest of detail that goes into creating a restaurant mm. so every little detail was already in the business plan so mm. when i came back i already sort of had a concept i didn't have a name in mind but mm. i had a concept in mind and then spoke to a couple of people and somehow it just sort of fell into place mm. at the same location also so it worked out to be perfect it's like we manifested it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess. worked on it and then it happened yeah it just happened yeah, yeah. So, so how did you come up with the name sea salt um it was very random actually we were thinking of the logo and name i met a friend um she actually suggested the name it wasn't me who came up with the name okay. um but i was thinking of ingredients you know like i wanted to keep it simple like just a one word that is everyone can relate to um and we were thinking of butter cinnamon and then there was this issue with trademark and you couldn't trademark that one word yeah um so then she was like why not sea salt and i'm like yeah because we already had the sea salt cookie i always used to make it yeah so she remembered me bringing those sea salt cookies to her and she's like listen my memory of you. that you is yeah. that sea salt cookie yeah and then we thought about it and i'm like yeah it makes sense because salt is one ingredient that unites all cuisines right mm. globally there are very few ingredients and sea salt has history with gujarat with the dandi march and everything so yeah, it is so it. local to us yet yeah. it's so global and um not many people know this but 90% of the sea salt that india consumes comes from gujarat okay so yeah we thought um you know that makes sense like it just to um have it's simple but it has like so even our logo i don't know if you've seen the entire illustration that comes on our boxes mm-hmm. um but it has the dandi march ka root it has the coin with 1930 and then merging it into the cafe space nice that so, is a very thoughtful thing yeah. to include and you know with the history and so so many people hmm. uh, it can bind so many people exactly. you know in terms yeah. of being relevant yeah. and rel- relative like yeah. and our idea was to be sustainable in the sense we wanted to source ingredients locally so it could i am not saying locally in the sense like just from ahmedabad but like our coffee is an indian coffee our teas are indian teas so mm. as close to you as it's physically possible mm. so the idea of like it being so local and home 
simply yeah, but yeah. still being the cuisine being so global in its approach and also sea salt like in mm. any language exactly. people know salt, salt yeah. you know so it's like in, if you go anywhere in the world you yeah. have to say that this is what my restaurant name is or yeah. you know my cafe's name is and yeah. everybody knows it mm. like it's yeah. this it's the same thing in every language exactly. every country, country. like uh, you know you yeah. don't have to explain it so yeah. it it can be very global exactly. if you ever you know expand or yeah. uh, want to have like Yeah. Uh, branch in London or in yeah. New York or anything. Yeah, so it's like very relatable for yeah. everyone in the world. So yeah, great. I mean, that's that sounds amazing. And Thank so, you. how did you? Now you had the business plan. You came up with the name. Hmm. How did you actually start? Um, so the building sort of happened, right? Like it was still under construction, and now they were giving out these spaces. Hmm. So we were like, initially, we had someone who wanted to partner with us. It didn't work out, and then I really wanted to do this. So we sort of. Um, So Shan, who is also like he owns Swati, who was like okay. a major force in guiding me as to how to go about it. Okay. Um, and so he was like, like a mentor in a way. Yeah, smallest of things because he is my go-to person. Smallest of recipes that we used to try initially, I would like send it to him because he has such a developed palate. Like yeah. not many people would be able to figure out certain ingredients, mm-hmm. in, but he mm-hmm. does that. so he was my go to person for all of that and it was his building as well so yeah. he sort of helped me a lot in setting up the space and curating it and getting like you know sourcing things and putting everything up together mm. um my mom with the interiors Interior. and everything um so it just sort of happened we had a two month ka bracket where we were like okay this is where we have to just finish it yeah. so it didn't a lot of thought didn't go into it like there was someone who was doing the branding aspect of it i had this idea of the space being very minimal so every time someone would ask me what do you want you know like as a space you have to have a vision in mind yeah. and i'd be like i want it to be minimal clean and white so i want the food very, to get highlighted you know yeah. i don't want too much the colors and the freshness of the food has to speak for itself yeah so that's the look we went for with the branding and the space as well very scandinavian feel to yeah, it yeah which is so calming because yeah. everything nowadays on social media and everywhere things are so loud yeah. and in your face hmm. that it's a good refreshing feeling like when you when i went to your page yeah. like i was not expecting that because nowadays you see bakers and hmm. you know and baking is a colorful job yeah. and everything so but people have so much color everywhere yeah, yeah. and i gravitate towards minimal yeah. like that scandinavian mm. feel kind yeah. of a look and everything and i i loved it like yeah. it, it you know you would like to visit that page you yeah. would like to uh, go to that place yeah. which is like so calming and mm. it gives that feeling feel. of like, like a, a positive good, good vibe yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's what i love like i would Thank i've you. not been yet to the cafe yeah. but i would love to like uh, come in person yeah. and feel the vibe yeah. um talk to me about How how has the experience been after you started the cafe? You started in twenty yeah. nineteen, and then the pandemic hit us. Yeah. So, which is like kind of a dampener yeah. in the you know the whole thing. So, but talk to me about like how has the experience been? It's been amazing. Like so, the first day itself, I remember the first weekend we opened. Um, we didn't expect so many people. So yeah. we ran out of all the food we had prepped in within the lunch. our itself oh right God. so we had to close down the cafe our pipe from like we didn't expect so much load with the dishwasher and our pipe burst there are oh customers <laughs> everywhere there's water all over the floor we are out like- of food um so we've had some crazy teething issues and like our days but that's a good sign of that um, things going well yeah, in terms of I that guess. at least you you had that that much of uh, orders and everything yeah. for those things to happen yeah so yeah. um so we've had those days and then there like but obviously the entire experience of it all has been amazing i for the first 5 months i have only slept for 4 hours i was working 14 15 hours a day but and when the pandemic hit i was kind of relieved not yeah. like just to get a yeah. break <laughs> but um but just there's just pleasant memories of the space with the staff customers interactions everything yeah um and then Yeah, so we were open for five months. We opened 18th of October. We closed 18th of March, mm. uh, just before the curfew, because okay. we actually had a lot of customers who didn't quarantine and came in the day oh. that they'd flown in. Like you know, so yeah. we were a little scared. So we just shut ahead of time. Um, but 
uh yeah as in in those five months we obviously created a buzz uh mm. we won the times food award for the best cafe in amdabad from just five months of opening wow um so that was obviously a big achievement for us um and then we closed because it didn't make sense for us to stay open also to keep the dining space mm. my central kitchen was always at home where it is now mm-hmm. um so what we would do is even when the cafe was operational we would prep everything there send it to the dining space and finish okay. the product there you do not have the kitchen in the no sp- oh okay so okay. Uh, when this happened we would anyway have to had two kitchens open mm. to have that one space you know functional mm. and like even monetarily like we were open for 5 months we didn't invested so much in the space it didn't make sense to invest more when mm. there was no clarity as to what was happening so it was a really tough decision but in hindsight i'm glad i did it mm. um because this is a much sort of relaxed. settled relaxed feel for me also yeah. and i'm still doing what i'm doing yeah um i would obviously eventually want to open it again yeah um but that sort of in the pipeline so yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. no but great i mean uh, you know taking that decision and mm. and rightly so i mean so many people in the pandemic had to take decisions yeah. like that yeah and uh, but the good part with you was that your kitchen was already at home so yeah. you did not feel too much of a change of the staff or yeah. anything you know exactly. so and we could retain most of them because we just sort of kept it functional from the kitchen itself and now we are doing deliveries so that's okay. good yeah. and cloud kitchens are working yeah. better than restaurants yeah. nowadays yeah. you know so, so because because pe- people yeah. like to sit in the comfort of their space yeah. and eat and i think we've and, all gotten used to that yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so, exactly yeah. what would you tell someone hmm. if they had a passion yeah and if you could tell them something yeah. that how to do like you know just how to follow the the passion yeah. that they have what would you tell them i think two things like one that my instructor told me that try everything that's in front of you don't be picky because you don't know what you like what you don't like and even if you don't like something you have to know that you don't like it and why you don't like it right mm. and how to be able to incorporate that for other people even even if that's not your palette yeah. so i think try everything that's out there experiment as much as you can whether it's a coffee or like even different kinds of milks or you know different produce yeah. but just do that most people here i like they don't understand the science behind it so yes. cooking baking has a lot of science that goes behind chemistry. it chemistry chemistry right um like whether it it's egg and the membrane it's osmosis that works when you mix in sugar or if like there's acid and heat and water reacting in an oven so a lot of that plays a major major role in the baking and even the texture aspect of yeah. it um and i think it's very essential to understand that um so if you can understand that and do a little research about it yeah. it will help your product a lot so i mean it's a very uh, like with me hmm. it's a reversal kind of a thing yeah. why i said chemistry yeah. is because i am a farmer okay. student yeah. so uh, when i was studying chemistry mm-hmm. and i i never used to cook or something yeah. but sometimes when i do yeah. i get like i some i get it like why this is this and when i because i studied chemistry yeah. and the salt and this yeah, that yeah. even though the edible part and non edible part is yeah. separate but mm. the properties kind of remain similar exactly so that's when i was like yeah so cooking is like that yeah. like there's a know. lot like small list of things how like ice cream making right like how sugar prevents crystallization and fat helps solidify so little little aspects but every single recipe has science um, yeah. and that's something people should explore because it's quite interesting to me yeah yeah and if you if you know the principles better your yeah. dishes will sa- will taste, taste better for always sure always taste yeah. good yeah. doesn't matter like yeah. how long you cook them or anything yeah. i first you know got the idea of that like anything because one of my friend makes really good tea hmm. you know and it's yeah. a very simple thing yeah, you yeah. know but she makes it the way she makes it yeah. there's a, there's a chemistry behind it yeah. that's when i got fascinated about the temperatures about it. and everything is temperatures yeah. and also she told me this one thing yeah. that uh, we, we love her ginger tea yeah. like teens yeah. if you're listening like yeah. big shout out to you huh. uh, she she loves ginger tea and we all love her ginger yeah. tea so one fine day i was like what are you doing yeah. like what are you doing differently yeah. and she told me that uh, you've to I, what i used to do mm. is i used to i would boil water and then add ginger to it yeah, or, yeah. Or, or you know i don't know like something yeah. i was doing and she's like 
add ginger and you know that that uh, uh, what do you call the cardamom yeah um, add ginger and cardamom after you've added milk yeah so i i asked her why yeah so she's like because water evaporates yeah. the flavors evaporate with yeah, it yeah yeah and i was like i am a science student i don't know no, like yeah. you know that then that fascinated yeah. me yeah so then i then i started making it like hmm. that and yeah. then since then i've been consistent like yeah. my dad is like you only make tea. <laughs> yeah. and that's the only thing <laughs> yeah that i make <laughs> no but still yeah exactly like it's important it's really important to understand that and i'm glad you have in a way yeah, yeah. i mean i pick up things like yeah. i don't cook that much yeah. but i pick up from like one of my cousin is a really good cook yeah. so when she cooks like she she taught me how to cook pasta yeah and that's when i started like getting you know involved in it mm. like she said that you know why the butter is important yeah. you know how do you cook it and yeah. it 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 seemed very fascinating yeah, to yeah. me and uh, yeah and recently i have also been considering to be honest <laughs> really? i have been considering to taking <laughs> up a course yeah. like that or something yeah you should not it's, like a yeah yeah but yeah. it's fun it's it's a lot of fun and just to be in a kitchen it's even if it's a short program it's yeah. still a lot i think of i should fun. come in your kitchen and probably Do learn that. from any time any time yeah yeah hmm. or maybe you know like the yes. italian holiday like the yeah. food holiday kind yeah. of a thing a little bit something yeah. like that uh talk to me about uh, what are your goals like with this uh, you know now yeah. you have a kitchen at home and you're working and but what is the bigger long term goal what what is the bigger purpose that you um, want to achieve so i so honestly see so i started as a passion project it was not like a money making thing i i wanted to do it because i enjoyed it yeah. and i like the rush of it even if it's busy yeah so um i think that's what i want again yeah um and um i think so we do plan on opening it again but yeah. i'm in no rush as such hmm. because i want to do it correctly again i just don't want to find a space for the sake of finding a space i want to be able to create that ambiance again um or like you know the vibe that people came for um so we do have a plan it's just that it's might take longer than we thought yeah. but at some point definitely planning on opening it again so yeah. and who are some of the people that you look up to like some chefs or some you know bakers or somebody that you know you've met or you mm. wish to meet yeah. uh, you know and you you feel fascinated by the recipes that they have created yeah. or so something. a lot of my um go to inspiration comes from american chefs because i've studied there yeah um also a lot of chefs that i work with one of them was chef katherine gordon um she was actually my a uh, mentor okay and she was once so there's this list of chefs and there's like a competition right so she was once amongst the top 10 chefs pastry chefs in america okay and um, i have like she's taught me a lot about the smallest of things and then eventually i helped so she was working on her third culinary book mm -hmm. that was published 2 years back but i helped her edit it Oh wow. Um, so I've worked very closely with her and she's someone who still stays in touch and you know every time something new comes up. Yeah. So I've done a book which is based out of Loire Valley in France. So all the recipes are inspired from there. Then mm. we did a um, recipe book uh, based on like African cuisine, mm. um, Ethiopian actually. Okay. So uh, like you know like a lot of work has gone with her and we've done a lot together and she always pushes me to do something extra yeah. so that's one of them um and i think most of the chefs that i worked with there so i used to work at this restaurant called abc cuisina mm. which is um also one of the restaurants owned by a Mich three michelin star chef mm. and um i just applied for a job there because i loved the food there mm. and um so those places or those menus are my go to uh places for some more inspiration or you know like recipes that i would want to look up or menus that i want would want to refer to yeah. to be able to recreate them somehow over here with my own touch yeah yeah so yeah that's interesting and you know one of the things that people don't uh, uh people explore they come mm. back you know yeah. but it's also one thing that you get mentors like this yeah. who stay in touch yeah. who who you can look up to and who can you you can connect with yeah. them whenever you feel the need yeah. and you know things like yeah. that so that is also like a bigger blessing yeah. because it also broadens your horizon yeah. in terms of everything mm. yeah and uh, to, like talk to me about your favorite cuisines like i'm very uh, curious about like what what do you like in um, personally like what are the cuisines that you 
I go for. So I think a lot of my favorite cuisines have um, they're not like the, it's it doesn't have an Indian palate, but it has similar. Flavor profiles, hmm. so a lot of Latin American, Central American food, Peruvian food, because it has its. They have their own corn and ceviche and stuff, but hmm. they have a lot of chilies um, okay. as well, and they are spicy in that sense. But they're different kind of flavors, but yeah. they are still a uh, sort of palatable to our liking Asian food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because again, it's very different. Yeah. But again, it has that same spicy flavor profile. So I think I like that. I I am a seafood person. Okay. So I um, if I am ever traveling again, which I will not have here, but if I'm traveling, <laughs> that would be like a fish, a good fish would be my go-to. Wow, um, nice. So yeah. Great, yeah. great. Um, and uh, what are some of the dishes at hmm. Sea Salt that hmm. you do that uh, are you know like do do you have any story attached to a particular dish that or it's why so, is it a bestseller? What is the Touch that you have. So the tiramisu recipe is is from the like I learned the recipe in in Tuscany when I was traveling. Yeah. Um. So that's I have tried other recipes. I've tried like I've other tiramisu at other places, but I feel like I keep going back to that. It was actually we made a tiramisu semi freddo then, okay. which is like sort of like an ice cream, but then use that to make. A proper tiramisu here, so it's not exactly the same, just yeah. an inspired version of that. But that combination is something I um, it brings me back to that you, it place. It takes you back to yeah. that, like yeah, yeah. Um, I get what you. Yeah. So that um, cheesecake, the new uh, the New York style cheesecake. I think cheesecake is my favorite dessert. Like a good strawberry cheesecake would be my go to dessert. I think if someone asked me. There's one food that I could live on for the rest of my life. It would either be khichdi or oh, wow. or, or a strawberry cheesecake. Wow! wow. So that's um, that. Um, the, we have a Aztec hot chocolate, okay. which is um, so there was Chef Michael Lisconis, which who is like a genius in the pastry industry. He is like a go-to person for chocolate. Hmm. He had this um, Aztec Mexican-inspired hot chocolate at his restaurant in New York, and if i ever crave hot chocolate i think of that oh. so that's something we we couldn't really recreate it here yeah. it's you can't afford it here and the price points would go up but that's my go to recipe um yeah that's for, what inspired you to yeah, create to this yeah that so hot there chocolate. are a lot of recipes that are inspired from a lot of places or experiences and most of them are from experiences yeah nice nice uh, i would love to try all these yes uh, i'll send those over for sure <laughs> yeah um Talk to me about like you know uh, so many people like mm. as you said you went on this uh, food holiday mm. to you know it, Tuscany and mm. everywhere. Um, do you have any such uh, other like you know uh, goals that you know I I want to explore cuisines like in these mm. uh, countries and yeah. you know get influences from uh, these yeah. countries who are not on the on so much out there. And people yeah. don't know, yeah. but then it would be interesting to have those flavors yeah. uh, in India or thing yeah. something like that. Definitely. Do you have like, any travel food destination kind of? Not food destination per se. Like I said, like the smallest of trip you make, you end up learning so much. It could be within India, right? Like yeah. we haven't tried every single dish or ingredient that's out there. Yeah. True. Um, like how much ever you travel, how much ever you explore, you'll never try every single ingredient. Like be it chocolate, be it chilies, be it Like wine or beer or coffee, um, you will never get all of it. So I think wherever you go, hmm. uh, it's always a learning experience. Um, I feel like Ahmedabad, not in terms of Indian ingredients, but it sort of limits you to a certain palate, um, and that's something I miss here. Yeah. Uh, just experiences, and not even just that. Just being going out, talking to someone from a different culture, from a different country. And learning about their culinary experiences or what they serve at home um, from just conversations, you know. Um, so that is something I really miss, uh, which is making me travel, making me want to travel, travel even more. Yes, yes. So. I get what you mean hmm. because uh, you know when you mentioned about that uh, that hot chocolate, that thing also yeah. with me, it's like when croissant. When hmm. I when I, I smell a croissant, it's like. 
I'm in Paris. Yeah, like today, yeah. I got like a croissant from Starbucks. Yeah, and I was like, this I'll is. I'll send you our croissants. Then. This is Paris in a box. Like yeah. this is Paris in a in a paper yeah. bag because the, and I don't want to eat it. I just, yeah. I just I just want to smell it. Yeah, and again, like you know, uh, the thing that you mentioned about the cultures and. Yeah. Meeting new people and uh, express, you know, uh, getting their mm. uh, culinary experiences mm. and everything. Um, I once went to Sweden. One mm. of my friend invited mm. me there, and uh, and his mom made uh, I don't know. It was a rice dish. Okay. She they what they do is like uh, they uh, cook rice mm. in in something. I don't know how she cooked yeah. it, but it was very interesting to me. We don't do that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a Turkish uh, dish or you know. Oh. So what they do is they they have this coating of rice. The uh, the sort of goldenish burnt rice. On yeah, top. yeah, yeah. But it's it's in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And then it's so crispy yeah. that you eat it like and. You can just eat it like that, and yeah. that's the first time I, uh, I had it, yeah. and I was like, you know, th this is exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like that to have a cultural like I wouldn't cook that here. Yeah. My mom wouldn't cook it. Yeah. Or, you know, no in, in no restaurant also we yeah. would find that crunch, yeah. that kind of a cooking style. Yeah. And I still sometimes miss his mom's like uh, that that dish, yeah. and she served us. She served that to us in a gravy, like mm. it was like a, um, like how we have Thai curry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was kind of like that with a coconut milk yeah. curry or mm. something. It's the best food I have <laughs> had. Yeah, exactly. It's the smaller experiences. Yes, it's not like yes. I'm, yeah, not a country per se, but yeah. like little little experiences that make up your yeah, culinary yeah, palate, yeah. I guess. Say like that's why yeah. that's when I was like, yeah, I want to like explore more mm. places and like you know be with locals and. There, yeah. uh, those uh, you know, small little little secrets about food yeah. and you know everything yeah. would be much different than what you go in a restaurant and definitely eat. Yeah. Um, talk to me about uh, somebody who wants to open up a restaurant. Mm. What are the things they should keep in mind? What are the you know something uh, you you've been in the pandemic? Yeah. You've been before the pandemic, yeah. so obviously for a little while, yeah. but. You have a certain experience of yeah, that. Yeah. So if somebody sitting at home is like, I want to start my own restaurant yeah. one day, and huh. you have, you have yeah, that experience. Yeah. What would you tell them? And they don't have probably maybe they don't have a mentor like you yeah. had. Yeah. You know. Um. I think. Um, I feel like you should stick to the classics. That's what I personally believe. Like there are fads. There'll be there were cold pressed juices. There was there is kombucha. You know, yeah, like yeah. things molecular gastronomy that keep. Yeah. kept coming and going but your classic pizza pasta like things that have been there like a good carrot cake or a good pie or a chocolate cake right as simple as that like yeah. the classics are never going to go out of go fashion out. that is going to be like a sustainable model for you rather mm. than do, going with the trend or what is like in right now mm. it could work for someone but that is something I personally like as simple as like restaurants that work in, like or places that are working in Ahmedabad, you know, mm. like Swati. True. It's home cooked food. Um, Zen is doing carrot cakes and uh, coffees and simple like a garlic cheese toast. Yeah. Um, those are the foods that people will keep wanting to come back to yeah. rather than like um, something that's out of the blue and they'll experience it once, twice, yeah. but they might not want to come back come to that. So I think don't go with the trends. Don't try to be fashionable. Try sticking to the classics, yeah. and it will have a higher chance of yeah. being a successful it model. It will have for a longer you. shelf life. Yeah, and, you know, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's something that people should think about. That's a very good yeah. tip. You yeah. know, that's uh, I because it's very easy to get carried away. Yeah. Because you see so many pages on Instagram, mm. people doing so many different things. Yeah. And and it's so in right now. Yeah. But it's just in right now. Exactly. You never know what. How is it going yeah. to be? Yeah. So that's a that's a very good tip to give. Yeah. Um, now we'll move to a segment which is like a little fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's called Curious Quick Five. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what's the one thing you're curious about apart from cuisines and food and you know, or even in food, something that's mm. very specific? As in, I think I'm more of an athletic person. So more than anything else, I like. I love exploring and I'm curious about like going to new places, just travels. So yeah. I love skiing, I love scuba diving, I love going on treks. So wow. it's just like places that I'm curious about, I guess. Where you can do, have experience, new, do something. Yeah, adventure. like life experiences, I guess. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. What's the one person you're curious about? I think it would be Massimo Baturo. Uh, like he's, he's uh, uh, 
chef, uh, an Italian chef, but he does a lot, again with science, but he plays a lot with like the sound or like the senses of yeah. the culinary experiences. And um, I think I just like kitchens, like, or I, want to go, I would want to go to Noma or his kitchen or just see how the space is or how it functions. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, what's the one technology that you're curious about? I'm bad with technology. <laughs> I don't like technology. Anything, any food tech or anything? Are um, there any food tech food that technologies, you're aware of? Yes, I love. Um, so there are a lot of things happening, but I love um, exper experimenting with sous vide, which okay. is um, basically it's a new way of cooking hmm. where uh, so each food item right has to cook at the right temperature to bring out the right kind of flavors. Hmm. So what sous vide does is you just put the food in a vacuum seal pack in water hmm. and the water ka temperature is controlled. So the water circulates around the food and it is at the exact temperature that the food is supposed to be cooked at. Hmm. And the water, because it's circulating around, there is even heat distribution and it cooks the food just perfectly how it's supposed to be cooked wow. rather than doing it on flame. So yeah. that is something which is very interesting and fascinating to me. Great. I mean, yeah. I, I just have to like add something. Mm. Um, I saw something like that. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this uh, show of, um, uh, what's the, Zac Efron. He, he, he came up with this show Down to Earth okay. where he goes to different places and explores uh, renewable and clean energy yeah, or something. Okay. In one of the episodes, he mm. showed the thing that you're talking about. Okay. Like, in, he went to Iceland and they baked bread yeah. in the same way that you just said that they had like this geothermal pools yeah. or something. Yeah. They they cover it up in a, in a cooker or something, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And they put it there yeah. and after and it, a while it's boiling hot yeah. and then you take it out and it's, it's so moist. Yeah. And, I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. You can make ice creams using it. You can poach eggs. You can do whatever you want. But it's, um, it's an amazing technique to yeah, yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a machine at home. I don't wow. use it often, but I like this reminds me that I should use it more often. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a very yeah. interesting technology. Yeah. That yeah. and and not many people know that food temperature is very important. Yeah, you know, like eating at a body temperature and exactly. everything. What's the one place you're curious to travel to? Like one place where if I say that tomorrow you have to go somewhere. It would be London or New York because it's home to me. Yeah. But if I um I think I want to do Iceland for sure. Yeah. Uh, so we. We were traveling to Canada a um, couple of years back and there was um, a solar storm that day. Okay. And we had no idea that the northern lights were going to happen. And it was a solar storm in the sense that the lights were going to be seen up down until Chicago. Okay. So, and we slept through this entire storm. <laughs> Yeah. I so that's, a, that's like major FOMO for me. Oh my God. So that's something I want to go back to and see. I thought you will say that we no, saw it. So the hotel should at least tell you that something like this is going to happen, exactly. right? There yeah, was no yeah. information whatsoever. Next day we we go on Instagram and you see the location and you see all these pictures of Northern Lights. Wow. And we're like, we literally slept through the entire thing. <laughs> so, oh God. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's like... Major FOMO, so that's I something I want to, to do. I hope you get to see that soon. <laughs> yeah. um, what's the one uh, book or author you're curious about? Like you mentioned, Julie and Julia. Is, uh, that is a real book, Julie and Julia? Um, I think so. So it's a, it's, the, I, there is a novel, I think. Uh, but Julia Child was an actual chef. Yeah, like, so yeah. he, it's a real life story, yeah. right? Um, and there's a movie. Um, but I'm not too sure about the book. But Julia, so basically, um, uh, I think the book is there's a book she had a recipe book yeah and J julie yeah. who was uh, a blogger yeah, yeah, yeah. was making all the recipes from her yeah, book I've that seen she the had film. yeah 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 so. so is there any such uh, author book author or you know food book author that you have that you mm, look for up to or you know not really i just love fiction in general okay. um so i read anything and everything mm. um that comes my way i've started reading a lot of like books based on Indian mythology now, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they are all fictional, so they are not essentially as to what happened, but they are like from a perspective from a modern person. Oh, yeah. nice! So I've started reading a lot of those. That sounds interesting. Yeah. My favorite book, like, is Palace of Illusions. Okay. Um, so it's basically uh, Mahabharat, okay. but written from Draupadi's point of view. So, you know, everyone talks about um, Arjun and Yudhishthir, and, but no one really talks about what Draupadi went to when she was forced to marry five men. Hmm. And like her journey and how big a role um, she played in the entire war. Like she was the one who instigated it, right? Yeah. So, um, so her journey through all of it. 
Um, so yeah, that's um, yeah, very very interesting. Yeah. I would like to like go through that book. Yeah, it's a really well written <laughs> book because I don't like to. I'm not inclined towards mythological books as hmm. such, but I would love to read something like this, like yeah. which is a modern perspective yeah. and everything. Hmm. So we've reached uh, almost the hmm. you know end of the hmm. podcast. And um, is there any last thoughts about you know uh, about sea salt that you want to share or about like food you know in general or about starting a restaurant anything that any last minute thoughts that you have that you want to share maybe i forgot mm. asking you about it or something um not really but i'm hoping hoping to have everyone back like you know to face everyone like meet everyone in person have interactions and i'm just looking forward to doing that and hopefully we get a chance to open yeah. a space and do that soon until then i think we are just experimenting enough at home so yeah, yeah, yeah. people can keep coming and Great, new great. Um, so, thank you so much of for course, coming of over. Of course, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, and it's if you taking have, me back to like the entire journey, so it's good to sort of reminisce. Reminisce the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you got. And sometimes that also reinstates your purpose. Yeah, you know when you see how far you've come. Yeah, not not many times you sit and think because exactly. you, it's happened. You yeah, know? but then you get a chance to see yeah. how far you've come. Recently, we had someone who actually. Sent us an email. Okay. Um, and so it said reasons why sea sea salt should open again. Oh wow! And there was a there was a long like letter that they sent us saying like this is why you should open again and we hope you do it soon. Yeah. And that it was just like a good change to have you know for yeah, someone yeah. to actually randomly take the effort to write an email about it. Um. So yeah, this is. I think inspiring me to do it sooner. I yeah, guess. yeah, you should. And it also shows that something that you're doing with so much heart mm. is reaching out to people yeah. and making them feel that way. Yeah, you know. So your the way you are doing it and you know the vibe with which you are doing it is it's reaching yeah. out to people yeah. like that, which yeah. is which is amazing. Yeah. So great. I mean, like, you know, you I so would much. love to sit down with you and Done. have more conversations. Done. Thank for you so sure. much of for course, for course. taking the time Anytime. and coming on the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you.